Welcome to the Museum Roadshow. I'm Roger Engstrom. Ruby Gard is back again this weekend, this week talking about her memories of growing up north of Floyd Lake on Long Richwood Road in Guards Corner. I can remember this like it was yesterday that I came home from school on the bus and it was a spring day. Actually, I think it was March. And my mother was house cleaning, so all the curtains were off the windows. And I come running in their home from school, and there was a television. Oh my gosh, a black and white television, which was awesome. We'd never had such a thing before. And so that night, um, my mom made barbecue ribs, and we sat down right in front of the television. She pulled a table in there, and we ate right in front of the table. And I remember at 6.30, Martha Ray was on. And uh, that was just wonderful. And after school, when you came home right after school, Howdy Doody would be on. And uh, I don't remember what this show was, but M-I-C-K-E-Y-M-O-U-S-E, -E, that, that show, Mickey Mouse was on. And uh, it, it was really fun. And we had a small ice box for a refrigerator. I can't imagine the little amount of food that we had in that ice box because it was the size of a, a small box. And on the bottom was where you put the big chunk of ice. And they would actually, uh, by the Holiday Inn, they would actually uh, there would be guys that would chop the ice and then you'd buy that ice and they'd put that in the bottom of the ice box and then you had that little tiny space. But you know, it's a funny thing. I don't know really what we even put in there, but um, we canned. My mother, I said one time that my mother canned anything that moved. <laughs> And so uh, she canned, now you days you don't hear that, but she canned chicken, she canned beef, she canned pork. So that was in quart jars instead of like, like what we do now, have freezers to put that in. And the milk went down in the well, the big long well. The milk went down in there and kept that cold. And then we took, um, we made butter out of the cream, of course. And uh, you whipped and whipped and whipped that with an egg beater. <laughs> Kids wouldn't even know what that was nowadays. <laughs> but we whipped that till it got to be it was stiff and then that was butter and you put a little salt in that if I remember right. And then uh, when we didn't have enough cream to make butter from, I remember we got a plastic bag about the size of a brown sugar and it was, it looked like white lard actually. And it was a little bead in there that was the size of a pea and it was orange and you'd have to bust that you know through the bag and then you'd have to keep working and working and working that bag so it made it yellow <laughs> and then that was your butter I don't know what it was but you know that's that's what it was and we had a when outhouse I think I talked about that from being in school and at our house, we had an outhouse, of course, also, because we didn't have electricity for quite some time. We used a kerosene lamp. And at our house, we had an outhouse. And most people had a big Sears catalog in there. So when you went in there, you could look through the pages and see all the toys, of course, that you wanted to have, or at least dreamed about, I guess I should say. And in the fall, oh, that was such a special time because then my mother canned peaches and pears. And you know, each peach and pear in the crates were wrapped with each individual tissue. Then we got to use that wonderful tissue from town. And that was so nice. And uh, the phone that we had was a brown big phone on the wall that hung on the wall and you rang up the numbers. And I can remember that our number was 5F12. I don't know why the 5F, but maybe that was an area, I don't know. And so our call was, if the neighbors wanted to call you, then they'd ring one long and two short. And that would be our guard farm. And of course, everybody could listen to everybody's conversations. So I know that my sisters, my sisters were, are 10 years older than I am. And so they 
along with the other neighbor girls, would start all kinds of stuff. <laughs> you know, just things, because they'd get irritated that the, that the other neighbor girls would be listening. So they would fill them full of all kinds of stuff, and it would be flying around the neighborhood. And you knew where exactly where it came from. That was called rubbernecking. We burned with wood. We had an old wood stove, cook stove in the, in the um, kitchen. And uh, when you talk about a Saturday night bath, that's what we did. <laughs> and the girls got to take a bath first because they were always cleaner. And poor dad, he had to be the last one, you know. And um, we had, um, we had a, a bathtub in the bathroom, but I don't know if, uh, why we had a bathtub there. We didn't have any running water. And the only running water we had was when you ran with it. You went out and got the water and <laughs> ran with it. And um, so we'd fill that bathtub, and then of all the crazy things, uh, my mom had some kind of little hot plate that was about this big, and it was electric. You'd plug it in the wall, and you'd put that electric thing in the water, and it would heat the water. And she was always just in a panic that the kids were going to stick their fingers or something in there. I suppose we'd have been electrocuted. I don't know. But you know, you never thought too much about about those kind of about those kind of things in those days. But it was um, it was just a different kind of life, and um, I don't know. My kids, it's kind of funny because when every once in a while, my kids, you know, when we sit around and they're old kids, they have children of their own which are grown. But sometimes we get uh, together and we talk about the olden days. And my kids always say, well, Mom, you know, tell us about school or tell us about this or that. And um, they always love to hear about the olden days because it's so different. And when you think of it in just a short span, and this is, this is 50 years ago, but in a just short span of time, um, in, in like 20 years, things change just drastically. And so some kids nowadays, I mean, don't know what a typewriter is or some of the things like when we had an iron, you'd heat the iron up on a stove, on the old cook stove because it was cast iron and you'd heat it up there and then you'd try and run over the clothes with that. And I can remember there was no steam irons and so what you'd do is you'd have a pop bottle and you could always f have um, find a uh, sprinkler top, you know, a cork with a sprinkler on it. So you'd fill the pop bottle with water and you'd sprinkle your clothes. And then sometime if we weren't going to iron until the next day or something, we'd roll those clothes up. So we'd have all these clothes lined up in the clothes basket and, um, and then you'd iron the next day. And if you had starch, you'd have to make the starch. I mean, it'd be some white, thick stuff. Thanks for watching the Museum Roadshow. We'll be back next week with more stories that Ruby's telling us. Mm -hmm.